Hey everyone, and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about all the things that we found going on in the world of Linux that interest us, that are fun, weird, strange, kind of crazy. I'm Vin. That's Joe and Pedro. Hey, Pedro. Hello, Hello Pedro. How are you, Pedro? Pedro? You're wearing that shirt that gives everyone headaches. Uh, th- then don't look at my shirt. Uh, <laughs> eyes up here. And all that. Um, <laughs> look look yeah. at the stash when I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, look at the stash. I actually need to shave at some point, but uh, not right now. Uh, right yeah. now, I'm. Well, the most eventful thing that happened this week is I went to the to register in the new uh, doctor's thing because I completely forgot to do that when I moved, and now I have to give them a sample. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Ooh, man, a mustache sample. Uh, if only. No, no, no. It's a yeah. urine sample. <laughs> Jill, what is up? Do you think it's your squeeing this week? <laughs> yes. So we had community hack night at Riot Games once again on Monday, and it was really cool because uh uh Doobie, who's one of the Linux sysadmins for Riot, gave a talk on Docker. And he couldn't go into the details, of course, on how they use it at at Riot, but he was able to he he did a intro on on how to set one up. So that was really, really cool. He set up a, a Minecraft server with it. And that was awesome. And then um, I also uh, just snatched the Acer 43-inch 4K monitor that Ven has. So I'm going to be dealing with uh, how to, where to put it. <laughs> so... Hashtag Hail Santa. <laughs> yeah. This is my arm link. That it... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, so it'll really help me in my shows to increase screen real estate and help me just see things easier as if my 330-inch monitors aren't big enough. But this this will actually help me. <laughs> so. Until it falls on you and traps you. And <laughs> then, then Jill's going to like, help Steve. And Steve's like, give me a minute. i got to find the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, true that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I've been playing around with Jack. Jack does uh, Jack's audio. It's audio server and get ready to go to bed. You, it, it, it surprises me, which is something I knew it could do. If you have multiple projects open between like your Dawn sequencers and stuff like that, you can set it up to where, like, where it just tracks everything while you're working on it across programs. It's like, oh, that's really neat. Uh, I know it's kind of boring, but I just thought I'd share that with everyone. However... <laughs> Linus has got some words. Awesome. Social oh, media. Yes. It, <laughs> oh, boy. Is he yelling at clouds? What's going on? Uh, I mean, they're basically Linux servers, right? So if anyone gets to yell at them, it's Linus Torvalds. And uh, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. So the person in charge of the operating system that uh, basically runs the internet uh, gave an interview a while back, and he said that he absolutely detests modern media like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, mm-hmm. He called it a disease. Uh, seems to encourage bad behavior, <laughs> his words. And he has a point. Let's be honest, he has a point. Twitter is fighting a losing battle with bot farms. Facebook has landed itself uh, in enough hot water to boil a medium-sized sovereign nation. And, <laughs> well, Google Plus, to the end, was littered with spam there was spam all over the place so yeah basically social media is crap crap where the maggots grow into the scum of the earth scum of the earth that then tries to shape the real world around them based on those preconceived notions that they got off social media and i'll get off my soapbox now because yeah i could go on for about about that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's so true pedro so true and yeah linus like us he actually loved google plus at least tolerated it and used it and posted mm-hmm. a lot on there about his his uh uh diving in the ocean excursions and that was always really fun and sometimes he talked tech too as well and um you know i i you know linus liked google plus for a lot of the same reasons we did is that you could, you know, create your own circles and and decide who you're gonna who and who not you're gonna talk to. So it was more it was more much more intimate platform than than the other uh, social networking platforms. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I I get it, I get it, but I, I'm constantly thinking, you know, hey, it 
remember in the Simpsons when it was like, is the kids are wrong and I'm out of touch? No. Mm -hmm. But I kind of feel like that, you know, we are getting old. Culture is changing around us. And yes, we kind of got to adapt or possibly just get comfortable yelling at clouds and becoming our parents and all that. <laughs> Social media, I, I, I don't know if it's necessarily changed humanity. It's just letting people who normally do that get together in groups. Mm -hmm. This isn't yeah. regular human behavior. You're just seeing it now. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. And that's one of the points that mm -hmm. uh, Linus brought up, which is the like-mindedness of people bringing them together in a medium that would not have been possible if, you know, social media and the internet were not a thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it does foster mm -hmm. a certain kind of relationship, good or bad, well... Time will tell. But yeah, no, it is very much a thing now and we have to deal with it. And I never claimed I wasn't a hypocrite. So follow me on Twitter at unaccounted for <laughs> right there. That's right. Long <laughs> live Google Plus. I liked it. Um, yes. Yeah. I like Google Plus. Yeah. A right. uh, little bit of news that I thought was kind of interesting is Peter Robinson on Twitter, speaking of social media, mm -hmm. um, he says, hey, man, yes. we're working with the team to bring Fedora to the recent little crop of arm laptops uh they have mm -hmm. great conversations with the group bkk19 about this initial focus on the sd850 devices like lenovo kind of happy about that because speaking of unicorns an uh, arm-based laptops like running on linux with like the 20-hour battery lives and all that that that's been a bit of a dream i know for mm -hmm. like myself mm -hmm. and yeah. several other people for the past couple of years but like speaking of the 850, like the Snapdragon 850 laptops, those things, uh, they're kind of underpowered and they are crazy expensive, crazy oh, yeah. expensive. <laughs> I mean, comparatively to what you can get with the next 86 platform right now. And I think one thing to point out is you really shouldn't expect a Fedora on ARM to ship like in this cycle. They're, they're, no. <laughs> this is down the road. But Pedro, you got a lot to say on this, but I also want to throw in, because I got to be me, is, I was thinking about it, I was like, this is going to be neat, 20 hour battery life. It's like, well, I can kind of get like 95% there with a 10 inch tablet and my Bluetooth keyboard that I carry around uh -huh. with me everywhere. And it's like, that mm -hmm. pretty much does it, but Android's horrible. And it's like, oh, it works. Yeah, and if you're just typing yeah. on set keyboard, then it's fine. But the big one here is price. It's uh, mm -hmm. those 850 mm -hmm. Snapdragons are not cheap. And most of the laptops that currently, most of the ARM laptops that are currently available average out to about 700 pounds over here in the UK. There's oh. a few cheaper <laughs> ones and the Chromebooks are pretty cheap. But we're talking about the Snapdragon 850 here. And while it certainly lasts a Van Wake cycle, uh, it is constantly outperformed in everything else by a simple x86 laptop for about half the price it's a very hard sell especially if you're trying to make the case for linux in the corporate environment where productivity is key and you're not worried about games or anything like that yeah the battery is great but working on an excel spreadsheet in office 365 running in Chromium or Firefox or whatever is going to be a very painful experience on that what Snapdragon. What are you talking about? On my yeah. OctoCore 1700 <laughs> Ryzen system, it's not like Google Docs can bring it to a crawl. <laughs> oh, That's, wait, yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, it does. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Jill? Yeah, so, so uh, like Ven and Pedro were saying, you know, I... Uh, you know, an ARM Chromebook with Linux on it would, would do the job, good battery life. Uh, but um, what's nice is is the high-end options that they're um, aiming this for is the, the Lenovo Mix 630 and the Lenovo Yoga uh, uh, laptops, which are very, very popular. And, um, you know, Red Hat is focusing on those devices because of the huge battery life, the 22-hour battery life under Windows, in fact. So we'll probably get squeak out more under Linux. But this is just awesome. Um, I think I think it's great that Fedora is, Fedora is going for the high-end ARM platform. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, that's just to bring up a good point. Chromebooks, I can use like, but Chromebooks are already a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back to what Pedro was talking about doing everything in a web browser. Ugh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> x86 still wins on that one because, yeah, that, that's what browsers were built for. <laughs> this is all thing like back to a tablet. Android does a good job too. It's just you don't get the full flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it if is you can very live much that for that interface. Yeah. I mean, if you can live that little app lifestyle, right on. But for the rest uh -huh. of us, oh, there's your challenge. You get your 20 hours of battery life, but you have to run Windows 10. Uh. <laughs> uh, what's the alternative? <laughs> <laughs> there's no alternative in Microsoft's perfect world, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Purism, right. hardware, OEM partners. Yeah. So Purism was working with Private Internet Access, PIA, as its first OEM partner. Wow, this, this is really, really amazing, actually. And, I, you know, I've been impressed with the progressive nature of Purism and their products, but I've realized that this will actually really put them at the next level in the industry, and they may become the new standard of security in businesses today. And this is a perfect fit for both companies that have both fought in court for our privacy protections and are aligned with the EFF. Todd Weaver, CEO and founder of Purism, was in court fighting for much stronger consumer privacy protections. And Ted Kim, CEO of PIA, was in court recently st stating that they do not log their customers' data. So this is really a perfect fit, and it really could be a game changer. Um, this is amazing. Yeah, and uh, private internet access, as far as they're concerned, they've been helping Linux projects and open source projects for a mm -hmm. long time, both mm -hmm. financially and, you know, by giving them that much needed exposure. And when basically myself, I found myself in a position just like, okay, I can't access these websites that I used to be able to access while I was in Portugal, but over here in the UK, they're being blocked, so... I have to pick a VPN and private mm -hmm. internet access. Mm -hmm. Like, here you go. That's two years for 40 pounds. How many devices? Five at once. Neat. Give me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's basically the, no questions asked. And, and, you know, they do have a really fancy GUI uh, if you're running on Ubuntu. But in my opinion, the superior way to do it, which they also give you the script to do, uh, mm -hmm. is you can set Network Manager to accept open open VPN connections, and the script just sets everything for you. So that's really awesome. That's that's cool. Good on them, and that's yeah. just really good mm -hmm. news. I, I like seeing stuff like that. Makes me happy. Yes. Yep. <laughs> also, a bunch of numbers after two make me happy. Yes. <laughs> GIMP 2.10.10 um, has been released with lots of new features and bug fixes. And boy, we've been, lots of us have been eagerly awaiting, awaiting this release. Um, one of the major um, uh, updates was the bucket fill tool has a new algorithm for painters. You can now use the fill by line art detection tool, which allows you to fill areas surrounded by, quote, line arts, which fills nice. pixels near the lines and closes line gaps automatically. <laughs> this is actually kind of revolutionary. See, with, I've already um, come up with a better <laughs> strategy for that. It's called good enough. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so one of the reasons why this is so huge is the bucket full tools and all the graphics applications have the problem when there is a gap in a line or a path isn't closed, color spills out into unwanted areas. And it's it's really a pain to, you know, edit your your pictures and this is just and painting and this is just going to make life so much easier. Way to go, GIMP. And um also the scale tool now scales from the center instead of the outside corner, which makes a lot more sense. <laughs> and the unified transform tool defaults to preserving the aspect ratio when scaling up or down. So that's really awesome. And there's just a gang of updates. I couldn't even go through all of them, um, but I yeah, picked some of my favorite functionality. ones. <laughs> yes. It's very, very nice to see. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. And thank you to the Za Marmont project. They have contributed a lot. They're the ones doing the project that's going to make a um, open source movie from using the GIMP. Hmm. So they have, nice. uh, you know, 
uh, contributed tremendously. So that's one of the reasons why we're getting so many good GIMP updates. <laughs> I think my pipe dream right now for GIMP is like, give, give me support for vectors. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because the... crit is okay. Or Inkscape. Inkscape's all yeah. right. But yeah. Who? Who <laughs> the user, user interface, man? That's a lot of Googling. <laughs> that's a lot of Googling. Brilliant, brilliant Aww. work for the team on <laughs> GIMP. And yes. open source. Let's go into it. I want to give this a quick mention. There's yes. a <laughs> new beta for DaVinci Resolve. You know, that's from Blackmagic. This is their uh, nonlinear video editing. It's commercial. Uh, but you can get a free copy that's only mildly nerfed if you want to try the home game. And this was announced in 2019 at NAB. Uh, they got some kind of interesting things in this one. The big one being neural engine for AI and deep learning. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, why not? Maybe I can make use of my tensor cores. Probably not. Improved GPU performance, Fusion 3D operations, cross-platform accelerated tools, GPU accelerated tools. That's big. This is one thing mm -hmm. that, I mean, I'm having to brute force everything with KD and live. You'd have to do the open shot or anything else. I mm -hmm. did try to get this version up and running on my Ubuntu box, but there's a little script that is pretty much well known for anybody on Debian based systems to get black magic, black magic up and running. And it's not working with this one just yet. It'll probably work in a few days. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, might want to play around with it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm determined to use KDM Live <laughs> as long yes. as possible, uh -huh. but we were looking a couple of weeks back because, like, how much does this cost if you have to buy a license? It's like $300, yeah. which is incredibly reasonable when you're talking yeah. about production Definitely. software. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, Jill, are you excited? Oh, yes. I mean, yes, let me rephrase actually. that. Jill, are you excited about the current topic that we were just talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 most definitely. Um, um, it has actually, uh, Resolve 16 has an amazing and innovative new editing interface called Cut Page, which features dual timeline editing. Um, this, uh, what's really cool is so it has two timelines. One is your traditional uh, nonlinear video editing, and the other is like an analog tape stream. Um, that finds all your clips in your bins and automatically puts them together so that it's easier to find find your clips and um, cut and paste. And this makes searching and editing through all your clips faster, much faster and easier. And zooming in and out of your timeline is always a slow process. And this makes that much easier as well. And it's actually really cool because it's... It's in, aimed at television commercials, newscasts, and other productions that need to meet tight deadlines and fast turnarounds on their projects. So this is just a much quicker way of editing. They still have the traditional nonlinear video editor, but um, they have this, this new layout now called Cut Page, and it's amazing. It's really amazing. It's and very they impressive also, software. Yeah, very, very, very. This is thinking uh, far ahead and it also prevent us from getting carpal tunnel system uh, syndrome tunnel <laughs> system system, system uh, syndrome <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing that terrifies me about da vinci i mean i like having pro tools on linux and I know there's like light works but uh, mm, um reasons okay <laughs> let's just yes. say that and ah. Uh, the problem with DaVinci is you start looking at some of the control services they have available that are like $35,000. Yes. Like, oh, I want that in my life, but I don't. I really yeah. don't. <laughs> they actually make it a hardware keyboard. They just announced of course, at NAB as well. I've been watching all the videos. And it's it's a um, keyboard just for the new cut page feature of editing. So hmm. I thought that was pretty cool with all the shortcuts and everything. And one of these days, I'm going to make it to NAB. I, I can go as an instructor in animation and graphics. So um, one of these days, I need to need to go, and I can do some interviews there as well. <laughs> and it's <laughs> just awesome. Cool. Okay, <laughs> nice. fifteen open source video conference. And this is what this is something <laughs> that speaks dearly to my heart. Pedro. Yes, don't break my yes. <laughs> <laughs> Considering that uh, Linux Gamecast started off of Skype and now we're using Jitsi. In all well, fairness, yes. when we started using Skype, Microsoft had not bought them. 
Yes. <laughs> and it worked. This was, it was pre a Microsoft program. Skype. That worked. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, the fine folks at uh, Medevil decided to compile a list, which at first was only 10, but now it's 15 um, open source uh, video conferencing tools. And like the first one is Rocket Chat GDPR, which as the name implies is GDPR uh, ready. Then they have mm -hmm. uh, Zulip Chat. Which uh, the big selling point seems to be like app integration. They have Riot. Uh, I think we've played around with uh, Riot. Tux. Probably everyone's tried to uh, make use Everyone's of Tux. tried Tux. They're like, <laughs> yes. oh, okay. What else is that? <laughs> uh, they also have uh, Mattermost, Linphone, and of course, number seven is Jitsi. Because yes, it's what mm -hmm. we're using right now Yay. and it works. They also have uh, Jammy. Uh, whew. Retro share. Dodgers. Let's yeah, Retro share. <laughs> uh, communicate. Uh, open video. Apache huh? Open Me Things. Yes, that's how it's spelled. Big Blue Button. MConf. And Linkia. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of uh, hmm. open source tools and. We're not specifying open source licenses here. If you want to discuss licenses, send uh, Richard Solomon an email. I'm sure he'll <laughs> be more than happy to discuss them with you. Uh, Don't this you mean is a just GNU email. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get GNU Linux. <laughs> His Twitter. <laughs> Uh, you have a new email. Uh, but yes, uh, the, most of them are actually uh, using WebRTC. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of uh, standouts here and there, but yeah, most of them seem to use WebRTC and the quote unquote selling point of some of them is how well they integrate with other services or how developer friendly they are in case you are trying to include them in your company's portfolio, which I wouldn't blame you because as someone who has to deal with Skype for business on a daily basis, yeah, find something else, please, <laughs> now. <laughs> Don't you want some of that lock in? What are your thoughts, Jill? Oh, yeah. Well, this is just awesome because with the advent of WebRTC open source project, there are a lot of free chat and video conferencing alternatives now. We used to hardly have any, and this is just great. And we love, of course, the Jitsis. And, you know, one of the main differences between like Rocket Chat, Rocket chat and Mattermost is, is the code they're using on the back end. Mattermost uses, uses um, uh, Golong and React. And MySQL and Postgres as a uh, MySQL and Postgres uh, uh, backend or li Linux library, and Rock Chat, Rocket Chat uses Meteor JS and MongoDB. So that's where the the biggest differences in a lot of these are is just just uh, what code they're using and what what backend. So that will determine mm -hmm. what software you want to use them with. So it's really awesome. <laughs> I'm digging it. Um, we've kind of settled on Jetsy because mm -hmm. I have VIN requirements for things. It's like, these are completely and wholly unreasonable, but they work. Mm -hmm. They do work. Mm -hmm. And Jitsi was the only product out of, like, everything on this list is like, yep, tried that, tried that, tried that, <sighs> tried that twice. Yeah. That one almost worked. I remember <laughs> that one. But uh, Jitsi definitely landed in my I don't completely hate it category of rewards, which is a very, very high praise. And yes. Discord? which is not open source is probably mm -hmm. the closest thing to Jitsi. Now Jitsi I like because you can roll it out. You can roll your own. You can deploy it on like a droplet from DigitalOcean and ocean. If you want like one, you're not going to do like more than one or two people on call, but it is brilliant. It's what we like to use here. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Send us some feedback. If you know something that you use, that's better. We're mm -hmm. always open to suggestions. And this one mm -hmm. kind of reads like a, a bit of a checklist for when Jitsi inev inevitably done goofs on something. <laughs> yes. It's like, okay, <laughs> let's try all of these now. <laughs> I've actually, the uh, next stage is we're going to be using whatever I name what I've come up with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've gotten <laughs> elbow deep in WebRTC. It's like, I can oh, make nice. my own now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. That should horrify you. Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft. <laughs> Not fueling any rumors whatsoever. Microsoft and mm -hmm. Ubuntu Maker Canonical launch Visual Studio Code Snap for Linux. Yay! Our long national nightmare is still blatantly present. However, <laughs> we do have a snap officially from Microsoft because you're saying, Vin, hey man, 
there's already been a snap of Visual Code Studio, and it terrifies me, which I'll say, yes, you're correct, but this one is directly from Redmond, so be more afraid. Um, okay, this is the thing. I don't know anything mm -hmm. about Visual Studio Code, and if everything goes right in my life, I will never know anything about it. So are, are we excited about this? Uh, <laughs> Jill? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, truthfully. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it, it does make sense for Microsoft, who now uh, won't have to support multiple distros by using a snap, which makes sense. And um, they already do have a, a deb of a dot deb of Visual Studio Code. And I had uh, tried it when the dot deb deb came out, and in it ran perfectly well. <laughs> so Yeah. You see, between <laughs> this and PowerShell, which are like the two major snaps that Microsoft has put out, I can see the point in PowerShell. It's like, okay. Yeah. You put another uh shell in front of Linux people and they will just eat it because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. What I don't get is why an electron app like Visual Studio Code needs another <laughs> container around it. Yes. Or why it's getting as much attention and has everyone's like, oh, Microsoft official snap for Visual Studio. What's the big deal? Seriously. Yeah. And I'll tell you what the big deal is. This this allows a certain type of people who they'll get out their thing of red yarn and stick it to the wall and draw the lines. And you're like, see, Microsoft's buying canonical. See? Yeah. <laughs> they had already released PowerShell as a snap. Red Yard, Pedro. <laughs> yeah. Red Yard. <laughs> <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, none of this matters because we're all going to abandon Windows for Linux. Yes. Microsoft yes. is dead. Long live Microsoft. But uh, yes, in, in uh, you know, before uh, Linux uh, or Linus Tech Tips put out the uh, video about uh, Microsoft needing to be very afraid of Linux. There was yes. a bit of an article <laughs> that showed up uh, just simply titled Reasons to Abandon Linux for uh, to Abandon Windows for Linux. And it's, uh, well, it's one of those articles. It, this is nothing new. Uh, even if you have come into Linux land recently uh, and you're only looking for validation, chances are this is like the umpteenth article that you're reading with this particular message. Yes, it's more secure. Uh, there's less bloat. There, it's, uh, there's... Uh, like software, you get it from a repository or a store, if you want to call it that. Uh, so it's all centralized, making it even more secure on top of that. So yeah, it's the usual stuff. If you've been using Linux for a while, this is literally nothing new. Now, if this was an article titled, "The like Adobe releases the creative suite on some Linux flavor, that would be the turning point. That would be the kind of article I'd be going, oh boy. Most people who do this for a living have already abandoned Adobe, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, I mean, yeah. it's, got, it's got, the more the better. Somebody's going to read that. Is that going to make them change over to, from Linux to Windows? No. you you got to have that one. you got to have that need. you got to have that mm -hmm. desire to be, okay, I am going to nuke and pave or dual boot, which you'll probably end up nuking and paving. Because you'll mess something up the first time you do it. Uh, <laughs> however, you know, the if you're thinking about doing it, you know, like the whole idea of convincing someone or getting them to run Linux, what that grain of salt that genuinely has to be there, and I mean it does, is I like learning new things. I like exactly. a challenge. <laughs> and I said on Twitter, it got a little bit of love. I was just thinking about it, and this is not an original thought by any means, was... Linux is not necessarily difficult in any unique, strange way. It That's not the hard part. The hard part for people seems to be unlearning Windows. Mm -hmm. That is the yeah. common complaint, the common thread that I've seen. Tying things together is like, but Windows does it this way. It's like, yes, and that is a textbook example of the wrong way to do it. So let's not bring that over to the Linux ecosystem. Yes. Just because that's what you're used to, it doesn't mean that it's the right way to do it. And they do touch on that in this article on the closing thoughts. Yeah, it's unlearning Windows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> keep that in mind. Please keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but Snaps, you, you like all the portable stuff, Jill? 
<laughs> yeah, well, well, that's that's one of the advantages of using snaps and flat packs or app images. It's really good for the new users because you know they just click it, one click install, and it's done. <laughs> and um, you know, it's 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 also great for you know up, it keeps uh, the packages are updated on snaps and mm -hmm. flat packs and. And it's it, it's a really easy ecosystem for new users to Linux to use. It can so. be. One of the mm -hmm. arguments I genuinely, how many times have you seen this, Pedro? The command line. You're like, oh, you got to use the command line. Yes. Yes. <laughs> to, which, getting back to doing something in Linux versus doing it in Windows, I was like, okay, do, do you really want to have the blindfold me and make me use my toes? Okay. <laughs> To install a program from the command line using apt or DNF or anything like that versus you going to a website, going to the download, dodging all their register stuff, yes. downloading, that, <laughs> double clicking on install, clicking the next button 13 times, exactly. making sure you <laughs> yeah. don't get the included spyware tracking stuff. Uh, who's going to have that installed first? And remember, I'm oh, using yeah. my toes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's it's a matter, the thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a also matter of true cat and paste. in Windows. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you can do the cut and paste, but don't just copy paste stuff off the internet. That's how you get Linux malware. And if you think Windows malware is bad, wait until you run into your first situation of uh, Linux malware. <laughs> I don't but understand it's... anybody who's really tied into privacy with the, the first thing everyone pointed out when the source code for Windows calculators, like, why does this have telemetry in it? Really? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> and it's like the command line. Even you see it in actual advanced Windows users, people who have been dealing with Windows for ages now, they will just open up PowerShell or they'll open up uh, the command line and do everything from there because it's faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's faster. And that's how you yes. tell the posers <laughs> that are saying, oh, but Linux is so antiquated that I have to use the command line to do everything. Oh, from Lord. the actual <laughs> people. Those people are lovely and they're called Windows desktop experts and they click the next yeah. button very well, Pedro. Yes. <laughs> Well. <laughs> they really Good know one. how to install video games on Steam. Experts, <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're about to jump into the slice of pie. We want to say if you like our nonsense, you want to support it, uh, you can do that at linuxgamecast.com forward slash support or click the support button. It's cleverly disguised there. We got a gang of beautiful Patreons, and I want to thank every single one of them. Yay. We got Amazon affiliate links. <laughs> if you're going to buy something, be like, hey, man, I'll give these weirdos a little bit of cut. Nothing to fill out. You just click, you buy. We get a few pennies from that. We got a wish zone. Hey, we're always trying to upgrade and make a better show. If your wife's like, hey, man, I'll throw you some hardware. That's very much appreciated. More than that in 11. Humble links, magic internet money, and um, mm -hmm. PayPal. But we, we got to thank Haplo because yes. normally, mm -hmm. normally we don't talk too much because Frank's always chilling out. He normally takes most <laughs> of this off. And I had a uh, new yes. Haplo here. Oh, do I still have that <laughs> shot set up? Ooh, I'm, I'm scared to even try that. I'm scared to even try that. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm not, this is not for a fact. Awesome. <laughs> he picked up off of our wish zone for our new render hey. box 1,000 watts. Power mm -hmm. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> Which I'm going to be using 750 of these thousand watts before anyone's <laughs> going, but when you send your thousand watts, and I'm like, okay, thousands of <laughs> thousand watt for the system I have right now would be overkill. But when you start dealing with things like the motherboard requires two eight pin EPS connectors. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thank you, Haplo. That is mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, as a patron, you get access to our pre-pre super shows and access to the live audio and Discord. Come say hi. It's brilliant. And your name and credit. Stick around for those. All right. Beautiful people. Let's uh, have a slice of diabetes. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> whipped cream. <laughs> yeah. Yummy. I love the whipped cream. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so this is an awesome, actually, an awesome slice of pie. This is log to RAM. Log to RAM extends SD card lifetime by saving log files to RAM for a configured set of time and then to the flash card, reducing the number of write cycles dramatically. And in this example, the author's own Lor Rowan. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm saying that wrong. I know. Laura. What if you Wan. said it right and that's really the person's like, no, you had it right, Jill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Laura Wan Gateway, which has already transmitted more than 30,000 uh, 30, messages, uh, 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 greatly benefited from this. And, um, yeah, so he, so he, he or she talks about it in the article um, ab about how uh, they were worried about the uh, you know SD card in the Raspberry Pi dying soon because of all the write cycles because that's definitely an issue with flash uh, with flash devices. So um, they set up this uh, this wonderful piece of software that allows you to set a timer you know, on um, how, how many times the flash card is written to. And it's with swappy. log to RAM, you can it's, do that. It's swappy. It's swappiness. Yeah. <laughs> swappiness, yeah. <laughs> That's one way to go about doing it. Um, if you do etc. RSS log config, there, just go look in the show notes. There's a very easy way to just disable logging. Yes. Completely. <laughs> because All right. And like, logically, if you're looking like nine times out of 13, this is a dumb device that might probably not even internet facing and long as it doesn't like catch on fire and like run screeching through the door into the night it's cool mm -hmm. you don't really need to look at logs also maybe it's a really good way like if you're screwing with other people's pies they can't figure out what you did mm-hmm yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh also if you have one of them um little a model pies you really want to disable the logs <laughs> because disabling uh, those extraneous yeah. logs is very important you don't want to put them in ram you don't want to put them in the sd card because that's slow uh and ram you're already starved for ram because there's only like 512 megabytes of it so yeah, yeah. Uh, there's actually a noticeable improvement with this uh three a plus series that i have when you disable the logs it's like oh it even boots faster now all right. <laughs> mm -hmm. SD cards, man. Yeah, you can have, you know, boot off SD to um, an SSD or something like that. And it's yeah, I, I just expect, I don't even bother with any of these because I fully, they're, they're sacrificial. SD cards. Yeah, yeah. Dime um, a dozen now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So unlike um, SSDs or NVMe SSDs, which I'm about to buy one of those just to watch it burn. It's going to be fun. Okay. Small mm -hmm. slice of pie, but we're full because it's got whipped cream. Pedro, <laughs> how can they get hold of us and tell us what we got wrong this episode? Well, you can always try and chase us down on horseback and lasso us like the animals we are. But if you'd like to, you know, throw some feedback our way, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, make sure you pick LWDW from Smash the show. that contact But We're trying to get Smash. the cash. We're trying to get the cash. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, make sure you pick LWDW and just give us all the details that it asks for it. There's there's not even a capture there anymore, so you have no excuse not to send us some feedback if there's something you need to get off your chest. Something we got right, something we got wrong, something you feel like we missed that you should add. By all means, let us know. We'll be happy to feature your comment right here, right now, like these lovely people. Jill, why don't yeah. you start us off? Yay! <laughs> So this comes to us from our wonderful Zoe in chat. Mm -hmm. So I try not to fangirl so hard. I don't understand. I don't understand why people say they wouldn't consider open SUSE on their desktop machines and consider it only for servers or in the enterprise. Personally, I find it easier to use than Ubuntu, given Yast, Zipper, and related tools. That means it is, it is easier to configure and set up the system in many ways without having to delve into config files manually. And the easy one-click installers for software on OpenSUSE.org. Oh, and I I agree with you fully, <laughs> actually, <laughs> Zoe. I actually am a an open SUSE fangirl. I've got several of these in this room, actually. And uh I've got a poster over there, in fact. And you know, um, I actually have it installed on several of my computers. Um, I enjoy playing with Yast and I really like Zipper a lot as well as on my animation render farms. I've got it on several of my Blade servers I use for rendering, and it works beautifully. 
And I've actually always loved the innovation and community partnership that Open SUSE shares with SLES and enjoy attending the SUSE Expert Days conference every year. And I w- would have never met my good friend Mir PPC in chat and the wonderful Open SUSE community if it wasn't for, make, for me talking to them at the Open SUSE booth at scale every year. So yeah, I I love the distro. I think it's fun, and um, I enjoy. I've tried both Leap and Tumbleweed, and um, usually use Leap, but uh, Tumbleweed is fun also. Okay, and, Jill. So yeah. to your point, you make a lot of uh, very good points about around Susie. Uh, but uh, yeah. what distribution are you currently running on the computer that you're <laughs> you doing getting... this very show on? At, at the moment, Ubuntu 18.4.04.2, yes. yes. Windows you have 11. a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Go but ahead. I have I have used Solus. I have used Fedora before to do the show with. Yes, I, there's a lot of distro names and none of them is open, <laughs> Susie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Freejack brought, Free brought up a point in chat, which I actually agree with. <laughs> Susie has its place. <laughs> yes, definitely. It does. Mm-hmm. It's not on a home desktop, but it has its place. Oh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> it's <laughs> not necessarily something that I pick on regularly, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do get a chuckle because I know Michael in Discord. He is a huge yes. proponent of Susie. Mm-hmm. Yes, to the mm-hmm. same extent Mir is, and there, there's always like this from the mount warning of like i'm going to update my Susie box mm-hmm. if you don't hear back from me send help yes. every time <laughs> yeah that's the thing uh, open Susie is if you're running in a slow update cycle enterprise uh environment yeah use it mm-hmm. if you're running it as a desktop operating system mm-hmm. on your home pc unless you're going to nuke and pave whenever there's a 300 megabyte update remember coming down the, the remember, line remember yeah. the feedback section i look forward to it next week you yes. just don't <laughs> i will say this i will say this um uh-huh. for an lts workstation box is going to be running 1804 and done mm-hmm. if it wasn't for that that's where i'd go i'd go to Susie. Because, yeah. I mean, if you are looking for a workstation, we're not talking, but then again, I'm not saying desktop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. I'm not. I know. I know you're out there and you're like, it's a perfectly, it works as a desktop bin. Like, that's not what I'm looking for on my desktop. <laughs> works is kind of yeah. the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. All right. What do we have up next? <laughs> We have XFCE. That's your favorite topic, Ben. Never heard of it. <laughs> yes. <Wasn't laughs> um, Mike writes in. Happy anniversary, Joe. It seems like only yesterday. Aww. Happy anniversary, Joe. Oh, thank you, Mike G. I agree with half that <laughs> sentence. Um, I love and respect Vin and Pedro. Aww. But I appreciate your takes. So, XFC is fallible because we were addressing some issues. Mm-hmm. Found in XFC. So, I know there's an appeal yes. to the Windows for Workstation 311 aesthetic. No, sweetheart. It's CDE. <laughs> CDE. It's CDE. <laughs> That's yes. what I grew up with in the job. <laughs> but I would expect to work properly at it. To be fair, I use XFC on several VMs because of how nimble it is. Okay. <laughs> now, XFC is not perfect for anyone playing the home game. It's got quirks. Mm-hmm. It's got quirks. And mm-hmm. they are reliable, reproducible quirks. And none of them are, oh, yes. X crashed. Ever. Yes. There's yeah, no Katie. showstoppers. <laughs> yeah. Pedro's exactly. got Stockholm Syndrome with KDE. He's like, oh, so good. Hit me again. Mm. 5.15.2 <laughs> actually fixed most of the issues I was having. So See, there's that. words will never come out of my mm-hmm. I would be on a different <laughs> desktop manager. Oh, it fixed most of the it's it's the good type of cancer. Really, I was on mate. I was on mate for the best part yeah. of last year. <laughs> Until those checks stopped showing up. <laughs> <laughs> That was there was one big check in you know GTX 1080 shape, and uh, I will look. I like GNOME 2. I liked uh, I I like Mate. It's just GNOME 2, but with the GTK 3 uh, functionality added in and all of the new stuff that you're looking for in a desktop environment. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to like properly managing Windows and doing 
complete desktop stuff. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, now with KD 515.4, I think it's at right now, KD is actually pretty good. Yeah. That's a pretty good is not what I look for in a desktop. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, the one thing I would have to complain about is the if you disable compositing, mm-hmm. the stuff like the clock and the taskbar, they yes. freeze in place. They still work. <laughs> But they're frozen in place. Whatever composited layer uh, was on there, it's just frozen there. So that needs to be fixed. That's the one issue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's good. Uh, that doesn't get played out. I mean, I took the Enlightenment uh, challenge. It's like, hmm, mm-hmm. well, let's try that. Mm-hmm. And I lasted for about four days. Why? It's, it was a good desktop, but it had legitimate bugs. Mm-hmm. Things crashed. Yeah. And no. And yeah, I'll stick with my old clunky. What did you call it, Mike? Three eleven. He means uh, yeah, <laughs> Windows. Hundred uh, percent. Also, why are you using GUI on VM? Hmm. Also, I wouldn't have said nimble, lightweight. Yes, XFCE is very lightweight, and it's very powerful yeah. for Define the very nimble. low resource uh, nimble, that yeah. it has. <laughs> it is nimble in the fact that it's faster than everything else, eh, except LXQT, mm-hmm. but. I, I would even argue that. If yeah. It, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just yeah, saying. Mike, yeah. And as, as Mike knows, I use XFCE or uh, right now I'm using actually Flexbox. I actually change my uh, window manager for um, almost every show just because I, I like to. I like I to. I like uh, introducing random, unpredictable errors into the show. <laughs> Well, I took, uh, you know, I was on GNOME for a while, so I took the GNOME challenge. Um, but now I'm back to Flexbox that I love because I've set it up and configured it the way I love it. And But I was using XFCE last week. Mm-hmm. And um, um, sometimes I use OpenBox and uh, Window Maker is another one of my favorites. But yeah, I, 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 it would be considered old and stale, but I love it. <laughs> OpenBox. I mean, OpenBox yeah. is my old and stale go-to. Yeah. It's all down to, uh, again, like unlearning. You can use whatever you want. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. And yeah. I don't judge exactly. anyone for using it. Like coming from Windows, you know, you're going to find like KD to be very familiar. KD is very mm-hmm. close to Windows. Gnome's kind of went and done its own thing. Like, I don't, it just angers and confuses me what's going on with Gnome these days. Like, genuinely, I'm not making that up for the show. I was like, wow, yeah. stop. Um, Trying to be unity. And again, unity. like, XFCE is, like, if you come from Windows, you're like, I don't understand this, how this works. But I've just been mm-hmm. using it that way for 20 plus years, you know, so. Yeah. Works for me. Hashtag. Oh, <laughs> go check out uh, the Linus Tech Tip video with Frenchie from Shad Realm. He's Wonderful. probably passed out right now. They gave <laughs> Lutris a nice little shout out. Yes. Oh, and yeah. Gentlemen on that bombshell. Let's get out of here and roll <laughs> some credits. Yay. Oh, and Zoe, speaking of which, I will take the open Suse challenge on the desktop for a live show. I will do that at some point. And I'm really happy that XFCE is their their default platform, uh, default window manager now. So that's really cool. <laughs> oh, they finally ditched GNOME. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At scale, we had the stickers and someone posted the uh, picture of one of the stickers from scale and chat. Oh, it was a uh, Truggy. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really, I was really happy about that, actually. Yeah. The, 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 the annoying thing about GNOME is... If you're watching a YouTube video in a maximized window, the video will freeze, but the audio will still be going. The moment you touch the mouse and move it around, uh, the video <laughs> resumes. Yeah. Why hasn't that been fixed? Yes. <laughs> I know. Yes. Hey, man. So annoying. That was a pretty good 347th episode that somebody wasn't wow. paying attention to. Wow. <laughs> no one said anything. Boo. Shame on you. <laughs> Thank you, Shatrum. We love you. 